I've been wanting to do more videos on the process of going from idea to functional prototype. And I've got a few real world examples that I wanna share with you. So today we're gonna to do exactly that. But before we jump in, I wanna let you guys know that I've officially hit the big times because I have a video sponsorship. This video is brought to you by Autodesk Fusion 360. Bet you never saw that one coming, eh? So huge thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring this video. I've mentioned before that I run two maker spaces, a college maker space and a community maker space that I co-founded back in 2014. If you don't belong to a maker space, I highly recommend doing a Google search for a space local to your area and popping in to check it out. Just make sure to check their website first as to when they have their open hours or when they're open to visitors because most of these spaces are run by volunteers and may not have regular hours for non-members. Now, these spaces come in all sorts of different flavors, but they do tend to have one thing in common, and that they are creative and collaborative spaces where their members tend to be very generous with sharing their knowledge with one another. I do enjoy my solitary builds, but there's something special about joining a team build and being part of a creative community that just makes life better. You'll find members working on all sorts of projects in these spaces and they can range from like interactive art projects to functional prototypes of their inventions. So today I want to share one member's journey on creating a functional prototype of her invention. Lisa is looking to solve the problem that she's noticed when attending cookouts and other gatherings. You've most likely been there where there's a table of drinks and then there's a bag of ice. People reach into the bag and some may not follow the best sanitary practice when trying to gather their ice, especially if they've already had a few drinks. So the mission here is to come up with a more sanitary method of distributing ice at these gatherings that's also easy to implement. All right, let's head to my maker space. All right, I'm at the maker space here. You can kind of see our space, we have a little corner here of this building. Then we're gonna walk up the stairs. So you walk up the stairs and some cool 3D printed stuff. Let's see what's going on in here. All right, we've got a few people working on some projects. Looks like Tom's soldering some LED strips. We've got this uh, really neat project we're working on. So this is a laser cut um, panel we're gonna create for an art festival. Here's the actual design here. So we're gonna make like a six foot version of this. Corey and Kaylee working on some projects. Diana laser cutting. Hey! Hey Diana, what you working on? I'm gonna be creating a wall clock. Nice. So, okay, let's go to the star of the show here, which is Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, we have Lisa and the ice escalator here. So Lisa, um, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. What's your contraption you have here? My contraption is the ice filator, which is simply a simple way, a clean way of having ice no matter where you are. It doesn't need any electricity, no kind of hookups, nothing like that. You simply fill it up with ice. And then, all right, and you just put the top on. And then, you just put it underneath here. Pull it out, and there you go. That's it. Nice. Yep, the ice just comes out. And push it back in. And that's it. Cool. No hands, no hands and no germs. No, hands, no germs. All right. I like that. No hands, no germs. That might be my tagline. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, before we dive deeper into Lisa's ice escalator, I wanted to back up a bit and mention that the 3D printed version you're seeing here uh, is not her first version. When she had come to me, she had already created a batch that was made by the process of rotational molding. Lisa is going to talk a little more about this in a few minutes, but I wanted to stress her point that one of the lessons learned in this journey is that she jumped too quickly into the production phase without first working out all the kinks. And this is where 3D printing shines. It allowed us to iterate quickly on all the design issues and test each prototype with very little time and monetary investment. And of course, to 3D print your model, you first need a 
3D model. And that's where Fusion 360 saved the day. And what a coincidence, because they are sponsoring this video. Autodesk Fusion 360 is the heart of just about everything I create at the Makerspace. It's a cloud-based 3D modeling, CAD, CAM, CAE, and PCB software platform for product design and manufacturing. Fusion 360 is my go-to 3D modeling software for 3D printing, but I also use it for laser cutting as you have the ability to export the XF files that I can send directly to any laser cutter, and I love using its powerful and professional CAM capabilities for machining parts. And the beautiful thing is you get all this in one software. When Lisa approached me to help her with the iScalator, she had already been working with a company that had actually created a 3D model for her, but she had exhausted all the funds to continue. She didn't know what 3D modeling software they were using, but she did have the step files. Using the design workspace in Fusion 360 and its ability to import and work with step files, we were able to continue improving the model without having to start from scratch. For example, one of the modifications needed was to increase the size of these slots. A simple sketch and extrusion and mission accomplished. There is so much to love with Fusion 360, but if I had to pick a favorite feature, it's the parametric capability of the software. Being able to go back to your design and make changes without destroying your model or having to start from scratch was what got me to switch initially from a different 3D software that I was using and I've never looked back. You'll find that the software is much easier to learn and use compared to other software in its class. It's very cost effective with multiple payment options available and has a vibrant and large user community base. Click below in the description to get your free trial. Okay, Lisa, so I'm interested in hearing what was the inspiration for all this? What, like that moment where you thought, I gotta make this. I think the moment came when I was at a picnic and I noticed somebody go use the porta potty and then they came back and they put their hands in the oh. eyes. You know, oh, no. And I was just like, you know, if they sent man to the moon, they can make something that you could have access to clean ice, you know, a better way to get ice. If you didn't have access to an actual automatic dispenser, I figured it'd be something simple to do. It hasn't been simple for me, but I did it. <laughs> And, and so I'm curious to hear about the journey of, of okay, so you, you've got this idea, you're at the party, and, and you're thinking there's got to be a better way mm -hmm. for this. What was the next step after that? The next step is I got an um, ice bucket, and I punched a hole in the bottom, and I, had, I built like a box, and um, then I had somebody make a, like a, I call it a slider for me, mm -hmm. and then I saw that it worked. I saw that it worked, and I, I was sitting there with some people, and they were like, that's not going to work. And then they're laughing, and then they were like, oh, it works. So that was about, that was the start. It was an uh, ice bucket with a hole in the bottom. So <laughs> so you started with just, like, that's good, because it's like the, the quickest way to just test it. Mm -hmm. like, got, I got a regular ice bucket, yep. and then just cut out the bottom, and you're like, yep. okay. Okay, so, so that was that well. first step. Well, and, yeah. and then after that? After that, then I had a prototype made um, in a... Um, locally made, you know, mm -hmm. in the area. And then after that, I um, I saw that again that it worked, and I looked into having it rotationally molded, mm -hmm. and I did, I got a mold, and I had it rotationally molded, and then I did, was able to get it in the market, and I sold it for, but there were tweaks that I wanted to make, there were tweaks that I wanted to make, and then, mm -hmm. of course, there was a downturn in the economy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I just figured that I would pull back and get it exactly the way I wanted it. So I, was this around like 2008 time, like that way after the reset? Um, no, this, this was this was more so. In fact, the funny thing is, I got laid off in 2008, and that really gave me the impetus to to say I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. But actually, I say it was like in two, 2012. Oh, like, okay. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna start actually selling it, and you know. Okay, so mm -hmm. about like over like 10 years ago, we can say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. It's been it's been a long journey. <laughs> So you got that, what was it called, a rotational? Ro rotationally mold? molded, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how long was that process? So so this is, you have like this quick, uh, you know, ice bucket, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's obviously really quick, but then yeah, when yeah. you, the process of getting it, like the rotational mold. The mold uh, took a it took a while. I, I mean, first of all, it's hard if, if, I think sometimes people think that if you have the money, people will just work with you, but it's not necessarily so. It can mm -hmm. be hard to get people to call you back because, they're not really interested in working with small small mm -hmm. people. So it was a very nice company. 
um, again, um, in the next state over. And they actually work with me and put up mm-hmm. with my craziness. And, um, <laughs> you know, having the mold made and actually having having the um, the product made, I say maybe like a six month product. Um, six months? Yeah, about six, maybe six months. Yeah. Because take, making the mold took a while. And was that mold supposed to be an actual um, like end product or was that still like a prototype? That, that, was, an that, was, yeah, an that was an end product. That was an end product. That was an end product. Yeah, that was an end product. And so was the plan if that worked, then would you contract the, like a whole bunch of them? Like yeah, I did. I, I think I had, you know, I had to pay for the mold, but then I also had to, I think, have like 500 me. And so I, I did that, and um, I was able to sell them. Uh, I went to a trade show, mm-hmm. and um, nothing really happened at first. And then about a year later, I got a call from a convenience store, a mm-hmm. chain that's up and down the coast, and they and they ordered 500 of them. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So that, that was nice. All right, so, so you mm-hmm. were able to sell that 500? I did. I was, okay. able, I was able to sell those, yes. So what stopped you from placing another? Because another? once I went there, you know, it's just, I think I just, you know, I wasn't, in the right place to do it and I had to come up with more money you know uh, and it was okay. just kind of like and I also felt again I felt that I wanted to make some tweaks before Gosh. I did yeah I really did I really you know that's one thing I tell people don't be so quick to jump you mm-hmm. know really I probably could have worked out a few kinks but I wasn't in the position um to outlay any more money <laughs> not not really I mean not you know not a lot I, mm-hmm. and um so then I found out about 3D printing, and they were saying that that would be a uh, that's a good and cost effective way to make a make a prototype. Mm-hmm. But I really didn't know, you know, anybody who did. And and it's weird too because I was just trying to remember where I even met you, and I can't mm-hmm. remember. I really can't. I really can't. Uh, and do you mind saying like how much you paid for the rotational molding? Like rotational molding. You know, I'm trying to think back. Rotational molding probably was maybe about fifteen thousand. Okay. Yeah, it, it was quite. But the thing is, it's it's like a um, a poor man's version of injection molding because it's uh-huh. similar, but it's not as as you know it doesn't cost as much because with the with the mold, um, which I still have actually mm-hmm. <laughs> in my garage, um, right. with with the mold, but you don't get as many um, units. You don't get as much. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like injection mold, which can go on and on and on because it's a different type of. But uh, you get you okay. get the mold, and you know, and it lasts for quite some time. But mm-hmm. eventually, you might not be able to get that. Um, that same shape. Okay, so yeah. it's not, it's kind of in, not quite like mass production, but you get it, like. It is though, you know what, because I tell you what, igloo coolers, that's, that's, inje- that's um, some of those things are rotationally molded. Oh really? Because like the, the model that I had made, it's made out of polyethylene, uh-huh. which is the same um, material as the igloo coolers, the Coleman coolers okay. and things like, yeah. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Um, I'll have to learn, because yeah. I'm not familiar with that mm-hmm. process, it mm-hmm. sounds interesting. Um, okay, so but here's the problem. So you, you've you've got these 500 mm-hmm. units, but then you're like, okay, I want to make a tweak. Mm-hmm. Would that now require another like fifteen thousand dollars to exactly, make a tweak? Exactly, okay. because according to them, although you know I'm no expert in this at all, mm-hmm. they they couldn't. But I mean, I've seen other where perhaps they there could be tweaks, you know. Yeah. But they might just been tying me by that time. Uh, <laughs> but you know, but um, yeah. So I'm not sure if they if it could have been tweaked or not. But you know. Once I had the the um, the model that you helped me make, mm-hmm. um, I think that it probably was would have been too much to try to try to um, tweak that mold, you know, oh, okay, try to modify yeah. that mold. I don't okay. think I don't know if it's doable like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's kind of like um, where you kind of hit a wall, right? Yes, it's, it's, definitely. Yeah. I hit I hit a wall. <laughs> so so someone mentioned you 3D printing, and somehow mm-hmm. you came to our maker space, and I think yeah. I remember like the day you walked in, and I, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I could tell like you were excited about. <laughs> Like I can tell when people come in and have that idea, and uh-huh. it's like just the way they talk about it, and like mm-hmm. like like you could almost like you could see the excitement, and like like you talked about it as like this is my baby. Yes, like, I, yes, yeah. it is. Um, but yeah, so someone mentioned, that, and then I guess someone told you about the space. Uh, I don't know how you found this, but you somehow walked through the door. Uh, yes. Okay, and you, and then you were asking about three D printing because you wanted mm-hmm. to know yes. um, that route. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so let's let's hear it from there, and then um, okay. what was the process? So okay, so then it was kind of like um, I had I also had I had someone who gave me um, 
they did drawings for me. Uh-huh. They did drawings for me. Like for the, the CAD mod- model the, yes, for you. Okay. For, yes, for mm-hmm. the, you know, and I'm not really familiar with that, so I thought it would be pretty simple. Oh, I have that, you know, because the, the, it was actually the, per, the person who had worked at the company. He no longer mm-hmm. worked at that company. And oh, so, so, so this yeah. is the person who did the injection mold? Yeah, the, um, the, the rotation CAD. mold. Yeah, he oh, did, yeah. He was, one, he was one of yeah, the engineers there, but yeah. he, he had went out to another company. He's a very, very nice person. Uh-huh. And so he, he, he did the drawings for me, and he did those modifi- modifications that I, um, but that, after that, I still, you know, would have to have someone make it. And um, so then I had Vladimir help me. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I answered the <laughs> that's picture. That's where yeah. Vladimir okay. <laughs> and saved the day. But then it was kind of like, I thought, again, if I give you if I give you this file or whatever, it's going to be like, oh, okay, that's it. But then I realized, once you explained to me, that they don't all speak to one another, I yeah. guess. And, you know, and it wasn't going to be as simple as just running this um and also, there was a size issue as well because this is small. The one that we'll mm-hmm. see later is much smaller than the one that I actually had on the market when I had on the market because most of the um, um, the maker machines do not accommodate the size. The size, yeah, 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 the size, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I remember. So you came in and you you were telling me like you had you know the drawings and I'm yeah. trying to get like what format you had it in and you, you had no idea like what, no. what software it was even used but, but you had some file that yes you could I, had, send I had a file you had, had a file okay a file. yeah and then so you sent me the file and it turned out it was a step file which was great because mm-hmm. I you know my expertise is Fusion 360 right. and Fusion can work with step files mm-hmm. so once I got that step file I was like okay we can you know we can go forward mm-hmm. with this so um, yeah and then 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 we talked um, yeah. you know since since I'm, I've entered the picture, I kind of remember the rest. But then, uh-huh. um, so we, we we looked at it. We looked at some tweaks you wanted to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and there were, there, were, there were quite a few tweaks. <laughs> but um, I guess talk about, like, because after we made that first tweak and then mm-hmm. I printed it, and I, I, I don't know if you remember, like, the mm-hmm. first time you came in and you see it. Because I'm sitting on the printer. It wasn't as big as you wanted, but we do have a CR10, which is, mm-hmm. you know, can, can make this. Um, mm-hmm it's in parts but it makes you know close to the size i think i had to scale it down like 80 mm-hmm. percent. but it gave us like an actual yeah, functional uh, yes yes prototype. it did yes it did um so i don't know like do you remember that time where you walked in and you see this thing like on the 3d printer i was very excited i was very excited because i i i felt that what i wanted to do was come to fruition so uh-huh. i was very excited and appreciative i really was <laughs> <laughs> i really <Yeah>. was <laughs> so i i guess the, the difference between that and like making it um 3d printing and make going through iterations because mm-hmm. we went through quite a few yeah, iterations, yeah, well, yeah, right? Yes, yeah. yes, um, yes, we did. Yeah. And and you're talking. I mean, just it, it took it took a while um, mm. because oh, yeah. I, I, as far as printing, I think like one piece was like 80 hour print, which yes. was like the, the longest print I had ever seen yeah. on that machine. It was, it was quite. Um, and I remember one time it's, it it got to the end and it and it's like the last like was it hour? Oh minute? yeah, we <laughs> had that, like a it fail. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. And, <laughs> no, yeah, was, I think like the film ran out or something. <laughs> yeah, so. It was bad. It was like heartbreaking <laughs> after all that time. Uh, but still a lot faster than going through the molding process. Oh right? yeah, and, yeah, and also too, again, like I said, a lot, a lot um, less costly. You right. Know? Yeah. Right. I mean, and and definitely. That, yeah, and that's why I said I would recommend to anyone if you're going to. If you're trying to invent things, you know, or, or whatever, to look into that, look into doing 3D at first, because yeah. you know, having someone else make a prototype or even, it you know, can be very, yeah. very, yeah. And also too, just you know, it still won't be as much waste because, I mean, let's say for instance, if the same thing had happened, um, doing it a different way, you know, mm-hmm. each time that we had to redo, it, I mean, that would probably be thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know? So yeah. So so I say any maker or inventor should really look into 3D printing for yeah. for prototypes. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, because we, I mean, um, yeah, it, it was pretty exciting. I think, I, for what I, rec- what I recall, at one point, I ended up, I said, you know, it makes no sense to make it this big each time, mm-hmm. and I ended up scaling it, was, it yeah, down to, like, yeah, 25% a, a of baby. the thing. Yeah, a ba- a baby it was like a little baby, and then we can actually <laughs> see how the parts interact, yeah. and, and we got them printed a lot mm-hmm. faster, and once we saw, okay, this works, yes, and, and it actually comes together right, and then we scaled it yes. back up again, mm-hmm. so that was the, the process. That was smart. Yeah. That was smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I have uh, quite a few viewers who have um, this type of... Um, uh, maybe dilemma. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. say where like they they have an idea for something and they, they don't know like what the process is like to mm-hmm. get like an actual functional prototype. Yeah. Uh, and you've gone through this process mm-hmm. and you've learned a few lessons. Like yes, I think I you've, you've already shared some of them mm-hmm. with us. But um, maybe what like if you can sort of recap a few things you would you advice you would give. 
You know, I, I think that I wouldn't be so quick to rush to market. Yeah. I, I think because some of the, the changes that I, that I made were not um, tremendous, but but at the same time, they do make a huge difference in how it how the mm -hmm. ice escalator um, functions. You yeah. know, because because it, it definitely was a, a functioning. Um, product you uh -huh. know it, it, it did what it said it's supposed to do it dispensed yeah. the ice it was great but there were different tweaks that probably if i had fallen back a little bit and went, when it wasn't such a hurry yeah that, and i could have saved myself a lot you know and i could have probably had it rotationally molded the way and then i could still maybe i, I could have pushed and still had it on the market at this time oh okay mm -hmm. so you wouldn't have jumped straight to that you no. would have you would have gone you would have like put the 3d printing yes. first work out all the work kinks out, yes and then go to the yes. to the rotation exactly that, that's okay. what i think so don't be yeah. in such a hurry you know yeah. i was in a, a bit of a hurry okay. good, <laughs> so. good 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 all right, good. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great following your journey. Um, you. and, You've been and a I, big part of it, and I appreciate it. Appreciate and you. <laughs> I, I want to continue um, following. Maybe we'll, we'll get you back on, uh, you know, and I don't know how long it's going to take for that next next I process. Know. But yeah. Um, so wh what's the next step for you now? Well, the next step is that um, I do want to, um, I'm trying to, get it, bring it back to the market. And I like to look into having an injection mold, which, mm -hmm. is, which is quite, that's why I'm doing like a, a GoFundMe, but yeah. someone said that wasn't a great idea. But I, think it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking like maybe Kickstarter, but maybe, maybe it's, I, you know, but, but, uh, that's, that's fine. Cause you basically, you just need some funds to get you to get, over right, to, to, you, to the injection mold. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. To, okay. to get that, to get that go, to get yeah. that going. Cause that's what I mean. Cause isolate really is a, it's a great product, especially now with people, yeah. um, there's a heightened awareness of transmission of germs and things and it's, and it's, it's great but it's simple it's just it's simply it provides a, a sanitary way a clean way yeah. of having ice no matter where you are great mm -hmm. right and, and mm -hmm. i find i i mean i've always been a bit of a germaphobe mm -hmm. but i think after the pandemic I, even more so like yeah. i wash my hands a lot more yeah. than i used to do <laughs> like before does. 2020 I mean, but, everybody so does. i i think this is something that a lot of people can, um, mm -hmm. will appreciate you know so. having that because i've been to those cookouts where i've seen people dig in the ice mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm like no thanks yeah. I, I don't want ice on my drink <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's I'll, a hot drink, day. Yeah. I'll drink it warm <laughs> yeah not on the rocks not on the yeah, rocks yeah exactly <laughs> Um, so good, and I'll put a link um, uh, to your GoFundMe page okay. if anyone wants to support um, Lisa's project here, the Ice Collator. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I have also some viewers who um, maybe have gone through this process and maybe an expert in this. So if if you have maybe some advice you can give oh, for Lisa yeah, on that yeah. next step, yeah. yeah, leave it in the comments below. I'm, I'm sure she would love that. That would uh, be great. Um, advice that or the expertise that we have from the community here so thank you lisa thank for, you. for joining thank us thank you for all the support over the years i'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing the next step so uh yeah we'll uh uh you know maybe we'll see this on amazon uh, yeah I hope, I hope so buy with one click uh, exactly uh, i like that all right one click. <laughs> thanks i know this video is a little bit different from what i'm used to posting such as like projects and tutorials but i do hope to throw more of these in i do enjoy the stories of people actually using uh the technology that we have now that have become uh, so accessible to actually pursue that invention and that idea that they've had in mind especially when it uh, comes from just uh, you know everyday people not necessarily um, professionals who do this you know as engineers or, or product designers um, so when I uh, have another story like this especially being in a maker space you, you see these quite a bit so I hope to throw them in I was um, also going to put a tutorial on uh, some best practices or tips when working with step files but I think I'm gonna save that for a future video uh, just because this one is already uh, longer than I anticipated but thanks for hanging out and uh, watching all the way through um, one thing I am going to ask of you, if you have any advice for Lisa, um, because she is looking to kind of go to the next step. So maybe some of you have kind of gone through the process. If you can uh, maybe uh, give her some tips or uh, what she should do next, especially with uh, maybe um, getting the funds to get through that next production batch. We'd really appreciate it. I know Lisa would appreciate it. So uh, any tips or advice, please leave that in the comments below. And also don't forget, if you haven't tried Fusion 360, use the link below to get your free trial. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.